Welcome guys, this is Ola from Stop Me O channel. This is the latest Life is Strange 2 theory video. Now if you're new to my channel, there's plenty of Life is Strange and other theory videos on my channel, so make sure to check them out. I also usually get early access when it comes to latest Life is Strange 2 episodes, so also make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Karen Reynolds. This is the most mysterious person in Life is Strange 2 and today I want to talk about that. This is a special kind of a video because I invited someone, a guest, to join me to present their point of view so stick around because it's definitely worth to listen to his opinion Karen Reynolds, Sean and Daniel's mother. This is a person that we first hear about in episode one when Sean goes down to basement and finds her bike and some of her old stuff. We basically find out that she left her family and we don't know why up to up to this moment pretty much in the game. Now I have to warn you guys, there have been some leaks. Pretty much the entire plot for episode four is leaked and some crucial parts of episode five. Personally, I didn't want to read these leaks because it ruins the the pleasure of playing the episode blindly but if you want to know then there were there are ways to find out and I'll, I'll talk about that later but be careful i won't be talking about any of these leaks in that video so this is a spoiler free leaks free video except for a minor detail but I'll, I'll warn you this will be like pretty much like one sentence while browsing through her things and in, in the basement not too many of these things like a bike and some some cartons boxes we found out that sean does doesn't have like the best opinion when it comes to his mother. How long is he gonna keep all this shit? Daniel is a bit different. He's too young. He doesn't exactly remember when she left. He doesn't exactly remember how she left. So all he knows is that his mother is not there, but he doesn't actually hold a grudge. Sean does. And yeah, I'll talk about that later as well. So this was just a brief mention. We know that during the Brett fight, uh, when Sean was protecting Daniel on their front yard, Brett mentioning Karen leaving her family triggers Sean into attacking him as well. Now, episode two was the one that actually provided the most information when it comes to Karen Reynolds. We were able to glance into her family house, meet her parents, Stephen and Claire Reynolds, quite religious folks. We were able to get into Karen's room and in her room we found so many pieces of information pretty much. It was pretty interesting and it gives an insight into, into Karen's life. Up to this point we didn't really know much about her. Karen is like Rachel and life is strange. I mean, you knew that she was there, you know that she was very really important, but you don't know a lot about her. You can only find out some things about her through people or through things. So we found out based on her room that she loved art, that she loved photography, poetry, and that just like Rachel, she wanted to leave Beavers Creek where she grew up. She wanted to leave that small town. She dreamt of going elsewhere. She even had a ticket to New York but I guess she, she never actually left. She felt trapped. There's this one poem that really says a lot about her state of mind. She was into new age stuff, or at least Sean seems to think so. She kept an amethyst in her room. She had a cross on, on her wall, and that's also pretty important. I mean, it probably was there because she comes from a religious family, but maybe, maybe not necessarily because of that. Now, this is a minor spoiler when it comes to episode four. I don't think it's that important because it's something that we all saw coming. Karen Reynolds will most probably show up in episode four. Based on these leaks and spoilers that we were able to read, based on the scripts and based on the voice actors that were hired for, for the parts, we know that there was an actress actually hired for the Karen Reynolds part. So this is really interesting because we will see Karen. Obviously, like, this is nothing that could surprise us because, well, she's the most mysterious figure and we have to find out more about her. She's way too important to ignore her and to not notice that the basically plot is leading up to a moment where we sort of meet her. Sean is very much still angry about the fact that she left them. We don't really know why she left. While browsing Karen's room, Daniel said that Esteban told him that she left because she didn't know what she wanted from her life. All he ever said to me was Hi, she wasn't so there. sure what she wanted with her life. Well, I guess she finally figured it out. So why did she leave? Did she stop loving Esteban? Did she feel trapped? I mean, possibly, but then she would only leave Esteban. She wouldn't leave her kids. She would only leave Esteban. She would be like, you know what? I don't love you anymore. I'm going. Let me keep my kids at least. But she never did that. Now, more than that, 
She also stopped contacting Claire and Stephen. Now, Claire has a very strong opinion about that. She said that Karen is not her daughter anymore, that she is no longer Sean and Daniel's mother. She's not my daughter anymore, or your mother. She burned all those bridges. Now, these are pretty powerful words to say. What happened? Would you be triggered like that only because she left her family? I mean, it's terrible to leave her kids behind, but is it something that would make you say that you're no longer my daughter? I don't ever want to see you again? I think not, not necessarily. I think there are three possible explanations and some of them are already mentioned here and there. The first one, Karen also had powers just like Daniel. Powers are somehow genetic in a way. I mean, we believe, and I recorded a video about that, that powers are triggered by emotional events. Just like in Life is Strange, Max's power was triggered by Chloe's death. Just like in Life is Strange to Daniel's power, so we believe, was triggered by Esteban's death. Possibly Karen had powers as well, maybe it's not exactly triggered by emotions. Now, if she had powers, maybe she didn't know how to control them. Maybe she was too afraid of these powers. Maybe she was afraid that she would hurt those closest to her. So she decided to leave and the easiest thing to do was to say nothing and get out of their lives. Now, it's possible, although I'm not really certain that that's the case here. We know that life is strange, but it's about emotions, not exactly the powers. Powers are most probably like a metaphor. Second explanation. That's actually a very simple one. This life wasn't for her, the family life, marriage and her kids. Based on her room, we know that she wanted to get out. We, we know that she was searching for something else. There are some people that don't want that type of a life. I don't know if you've seen the film The Hours with Julianne Moore and Meryl Streep and Nicole Kidman. Julianne Moore did that pretty much. She had a kid, a small kid, a son and a husband, but she felt so trapped and she left them and they hated her, especially her son hated her his entire life. But then she explained that she chose life because it felt like death that type of life. There it is. No one's going to forgive me. It was death. I chose life. I think that's something that can easily lead to despise on her family's side, but I think it's also something that needs to be understood. Third explanation. She was actually manipulated into leaving, either by some sort of a sect, a cult, or even a church, like she became way too religious or something. I already recorded a video about episode 4 predictions. Basically, we know that Karen is still alive. Karen wrote a letter to Stephen and Claire and she said she begged them to take care of her sons, so she still cares about, about her sons, even though Sean doesn't seem to believe it. I beg you. Please help my sons. Oh yeah, right. Total bullshit. What do you mean? She cares about us. Well, I don't. So she's alive and she's somewhere out there in Arizona. Now what I said in the episode 4 predictions video is that most probably Jacob is out there with Daniel. We know that Jacob was religious. We know that he comes from that small town called Haven Point. We know that there's a church over there with a charismatic female reverend. Now could it be possible that it's actually Karen? That female reverend is Karen? Even if that's not Karen, maybe she's just there. Episode 4 will be strongly based on religion and there's a cross on her wall and we know that maybe this is what she found. Although it does seem a bit odd that she would leave her family to become a reverend, like from what I know, based on what I know it is possible to have both. There has to be more to it and it's really, it's tempting to read the leaks and find out but I feel like it would ruin the episode's plot for me. So these are pretty much three main theories that I have and that many of you probably have about Karen's whereabouts current reasons. Now let's hear what our special guest has to say. I invited Serrated Cucumber to join me today and talk about what he thinks is going to happen when it comes to Karen in episode 4 or in general. Thank you so much for joining me Serrated Cucumber. It's really cool of you that you said yes to this. Now the floor is yours. Hello everybody and welcome back to not my channel. I'm coming to you today from Stop Mio's channel. My name is Sarita Cucumber and I'm so glad to have been invited here by Ola to give my thoughts on Karen Reynolds, so without further ado, here we go. So, I think that one of the main things that a lot of the community is wondering about at the minute, myself included, is when we're going to meet Karen and what she's going to be like in her grand reveal. Now, 
Due to Don't Nod's very selective secretive mentions of Karen throughout the series, we've gotten little bits and pieces of her, like her teenage room, a letter, photos of her, things like that, but we're all waiting for the moment that Sean is going to be standing face to face with his mother for the first time in eight years. Now, given Karen's past status within her religious background, it's safe to assume that she may be linked to the religious commune of Haven Point, which Jacob mentioned within episode 3. If we are right within the general theory that after the night of the heist at Merrill's, Jacob took Daniel back to Haven Point, seeing his power as a sign from God, this would mean that our grand reveal with Karen will likely be towards the end of episode 4 in Haven Point itself. And by this same logic, if Jacob did take Daniel to Haven Point, this means that Daniel will already have met up with Karen by the time Sean arrives, and could have been with her for a long time. So then what? Well, Sean tracks down Daniel in Haven Point and finally meets Karen. Given that Sean's relationship with Daniel was unstable by the end of episode 3 and Sean has expressed his dislike and distrust of Karen multiple times throughout episodes 2 and 3, if Sean finds out that Daniel and Karen are getting along quite well, then he may become quite angry at Daniel, especially since Sean has done his best throughout the series to discourage Daniel from getting close to his mother at all. In terms of Karen as a person, we can't ignore the possibility that despite abandoning the boys years ago, she may prove to help them in episodes 4 and 5, like a redemption arc of sorts. This would make sense from a story writing perspective and would give Sean's character an immense challenge to face, to overcome his deep-rooted disdain for his own mother and learn to move on from the hardships of the past, which is a key theme that has already been reinforced throughout Life is Strange 2 as a whole, as side characters such as Claire, Stephen, Finn and Brody have reminded us throughout the journey. As for how Karen would help, that's mostly guesswork. Perhaps she could take the boys in, you know, give them a place to stay, but I feel like this would never be enough for Sean to forgive her, she'd have to do something huge. So, what's the big thing that Karen could do to gain Sean's forgiveness? Well, what about his eye? I'm not saying she could fix it entirely or anything, but this may be what the scissors in the episode 4 with no context picture that the Life is Strange developers tweeted out are referring to. The idea of Karen, or someone Karen knows, using surgical scissors to perform surgery on Sean, or to pay a doctor for his surgery. Now, on the other hand, Karen could also end up being the Jefferson of Life is Strange 2, a villain who bitterly turns Daniel against Sean for good, keeping Daniel by her side for his divine gift, and casting Sean to the roadside as she wants nothing to do with him. Either option is plausible really, because either could happen, neither may happen, or both may happen depending on the choices that you make. Anyways, that's all from me, back to you Ola. These are really interesting thoughts. I actually listened to it for the first time right now because I didn't want to be influenced by, by what you said. I hope you enjoyed these thoughts as well. I think some of them are pretty interesting, especially the idea of Karen becoming the villain of the story. But I particularly like the idea of having a redemption arc for Karen and for Sean, that includes Sean certainly. Now the achievement for finishing episode 4 is called Romans 323 and this is actually a bible quote. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I think this is very much about forgiveness, Sean forgiving Karen for what she did. And as serrated cucumber said, maybe this is about his eye, fixing it. Maybe she will do something else for him. Maybe she will fix him in a more metaphorical way as well. Because we know that Sean is a bit broken broken and he needs someone that will lead him. Maybe this is what he will find in episode 4. Now Serrated Cucumber, thank you so much for joining me. These thoughts were very interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do subscribe to his channel. He has very interesting thoughts and Life is Strange theory videos most of all. Now let us know what are your thoughts and theories when it comes to Karen. Do share, we'd love to hear. Now when it comes to the leaks, if you want to know, if you really want to know, I will leave uh, an invite link for a Wolf's Den Discord server. This is like a Discord where they mostly discuss Life is Strange 2. There's a way to find out through that Discord. So Serrated Cucumber is also part of that Discord. The link will be down in the description as well as Stop Me All server, Discord server and my social media links. Stay safe guys, this was Ola from Stop Me All channel. Thanks for listening. Bye.